so you've heard my name said a lot. Um, that's funny. My name is Say, S-A-Y. I work at Crestwood Library, and I was also hired to teach you guys some art lessons over Zoom. And I am currently in my senior year of interior design at the Fashion Institute of Technology, which is where I currently am right now. So I'm coming at you live from West 27th and 7th Avenue in my school's library. That, yeah, <laughs> in a quiet study space that I reserved. So um, I'm actually really excited about today's class and I think I should just jump right into it. Um, so today we are going to be coloring different skin tones. Um, this is something that I think is really baseline for making art of people. Most people make art of other people or of themselves or some kind of person in some capacity. And while you can get really creative in all sorts of ways, I think it's really good to know the basics as you could call it. So we're gonna do a whole wide range of skin colors as you can see here. We have some darker skin tones. We have like a fair skin tone and like some medium skin tone here, kind of similar to my skin tone, like right here. And we're gonna be using color pencils. I am really, me personally, I'm really, really experienced with color pencils. I've been using color pencils as a medium probably for as long as I've been pursuing art seriously. Um, so I guess about 10 years now. Um, I love colored pencils. I find coloring with colored pencils to be really relaxing if you get really into it. Um, and I love slowly blending and building up color with these guys. So um, this set, I hope some of you guys have, it's upside down for you. <laughs> this set, I hope some of you guys have. Um, this is like a really basic, pack of 24 colored pencils, but you could even do this with 12, a pack of 12. And like the better you get at it, the less colors you need to use. So theoretically you could just use blue, yellow, and red to do this, but we're not going to do that. <laughs> That's a little too difficult. Um, so yeah, and uh, I think first I should explain a little bit about color theory, not the whole crash course, but just some Simple explanations in relation to what we're doing today, right? Oh, whoopsie. So I'm gonna take out my yellow color pencil. I'm gonna take out my blue one and I'm gonna take out my red one, even though I said we're not gonna use that, but it doesn't matter. Um, every person like ever is some, their skin tone is some variation of orange like this table. You can see my hand is actually a very similar color to this table on the camera. Um, it either, but the, the, the thing that makes everyone's skin, skin tone unique and interesting is that even though they're all some capacity, in some capacity, they're all orange, some oranges, I'll take this peach color here. This is probably what most people would use to color in a fair skin tone, right? So we have like something like that that I hope you can see. There we go. That's good. That already is like pretty decent, right? For a skin tone. That makes sense in our minds. But some people have more yellow. Oh my God. I guess not. <laughs> some people have more red in their skin tone. And the red usually comes from like your blood. So typically that's like very common and prevalent in um, fair skin tones and in deeper skin tones, which I find really exciting. I'm gonna use like this brown, but if you didn't know, brown is just orange with black added to it, most commonly anyway. You can get brown from any color, but that's most commonly how it's created. Darker skin tones and even fair ones can have some blue in them. The one color we can stay away from, we should stay away from when it comes to creating skin colors is green. And the reason why is because when someone's skin is green, that usually is a sign of sickness, um, colloquially and like medically. 
Um, so you can use pretty much any color, black, white, pink, purple, blue, chartreuse. Wait, chartreuse is a type of green. Don't use chartreuse. Just You can use any color besides green. Green is a no-go for us today, okay? So I will be using a whole bunch of different colors, but none of them will be green. Because if you use green on a person, I mean, if you have like, you're making a cartoon and everyone in the cartoon is green, like that's different. But people typically are not green, <laughs> except for our veins. My veins are blue green, as you can see, but that's not my skin color. Anyway, um, so I think we're gonna start off easy and that's going to be with this fair skin tone right here. And the reason why I say this is easy is not, not because it's like better or whatever. It's just because what it really comes down to is how much pigment you have in your skin. And people with fair skin have less pigment, which means when you're literally coloring with the pencils filled with pigment, you just put less pigment on the paper. So it is less work. Um, so we're gonna start with this guy. And again, if you don't have um, this printout, you can just like on a few pieces of paper, trace your hand and like color it in so that you have your palm out. Um, I just, I made this in case you wanted like a nice illustration to go along with it. And this is also like an original piece drawn by me on the computer. You can't find this anywhere on the internet because it's not there. Um, so this is like kind of exclusive. Um, so our paper is already white, so we don't really need to use our white colored pencil. Um, this is more something to use if you're coloring on brown or black paper or something. Um, but what I'm going to take is this uh, peach color right here. Um, I'm going to take this dark red. None of these none, none of these colors have names, which I find really um, disappointing, but it's okay. This, this is a dark red, it's like a maroon. And then I'm going to take out, I need a pink. I'm gonna take out this pink. Yeah, we're gonna use that pink and then we're going to use this like golden. It's showing up green on the camera, my goodness, but it, I promise it's golden, <laughs> all right? So we're using four colors for this. And what I wanna do first is take this color. This is our base color. And I'm just going to very lightly color. I mean, like you probably won't even see this on the camera. I can barely see it with my own naked eyes but you just wanna very lightly color this in. This is what I do when I color in anything with colored pencil. I lay down like a really light um, sort of base coat. I don't know why I do this. I think it just, I think it's a residual technique from like me using watercolor. This is how I approach watercoloring. So um, it just, I'm a very visual person. So this sort of lets me know the direction I'm trying to go in without being too overbearing. And another thing, I like to do color pencil in, in light layers because they're easier to erase. You can actually erase color pencil. Um, you just can't erase if it's too dark. So if I make a mistake and I'm like, oh shoot, that's not right. If I did it lightly, I can just erase it with a regular eraser. I don't need anything special. So yeah, I like to go in light layers instead of going all at once. So I'm gonna color in these two hands like really, really, really quickly, it doesn't even matter. Like I'm not I'm not uh, big on like caring about coloring inside the lines. To me, it doesn't matter. Um, I have tons of like little mistakes as one might call it on this, but, it, but it's still a good piece. So it doesn't matter, don't worry about that. If you color outside the lines, it, it's okay. I approve. It's say approved, you can do that, you're allowed. Because the point is not to color inside the lines, the point of this is to blend the colors properly. So as long as we get that done, then we're good. All right, so now that I have my base very light, you can barely see the difference, but there is a difference. They're like light yellow, light orange, right? So how do we go from this to this? That's so weird. <laughs> um, kind of fun. So I will take the same color pencil again and go a little darker around the creases of the hand. So like the fold 
at the wrist right here. I'm showing, I'm gonna show this wrist because I have rolled my sleeve up. Like your crease is here and there and everything. So I'm just going to like a little darker, this color side to side. Um, there have been, I've heard people suggest to color in one direction when using color pencil. And like, that's fine and all, but I think what works the best is to color in the same direction as the form you're coloring. So instead of me just going side to side for no reason, the reason why I'm going side to side is because I'm following the curvature of these folds. And so my lines aren't actually straight, they're curved alongside with the folds. And like, same thing with this crease, instead of me going side to side or up and down, I'm following the creases. So that it looks more natural instead of like obviously colored in. But of course you can color it in that way too, if you like. I'm, I'm one of those, those annoying people that's like, everything is art. Um, and it doesn't even, yeah, everything is art to me. So as you can see now, these creases are much more pronounced. And that's because these creases generally are where our skin is darker because it is folded. And uh, if you know anything about corners, you know that corners are like the darkest part of the room where things fold. That's where light ceases to hit. When I fold my hand, you can see like it's dark there because light's not touching. So that, that's why we're doing this. This is sort of, I guess this is like a really realism uh, demonstration. But I like realism as a function, like to function as a teaching tool. It's sort of like once you know the, the rules of reality and how light and color actually work, light and color are pretty much the same thing scientifically. Um, but once you know how these two things work, then you can sort of expand beyond those parameters and like go crazy. So right, I'm happy with how this is looking. I'm gonna color in the, the fingernail also because yeah, I'm happy with how this looks. So now we're finally gonna stop using this peach color. I'm gonna put it over there. I'm going to use this golden color that looks like caca green, but it's gold. <laughs> I promise. Um, and we're going to do the same thing but very lightly. And I'm also going to, right here, where it starts to create some shadow. So I'm gonna put a little bit more pressure on the pencil. You can see where I'm holding it. I'm holding it very close to the tip so I have the most control. And But I'm still very gently rocking my finger back and forth in this motion, as you can see with my index finger and my middle finger and my thumb. And as I move out from this line, I get lighter, right? So, and we're just gonna go over these creases with this color mm -hmm. and very gently like fade that out. Um, color, color pencil, being, being very good with color pencil, it has a lot to do with the amount of pressure you apply to the pencil and the paper. Um, and that depends on what pencils you're using and what paper you're coloring on. But um, I'm using a pretty standard color pencil and uh, copy paper. So this is as standard as it gets. Um, and you don't need to press too hard to get anything to show up on this kind of paper versus if you were using like cardstock or something or something more rough like watercolor paper you need to press more on but that's because it's for watercolor and not color pencil but as you can see I like start dark at the crease let me zoom in here all right you guys can see good I start dark here at the crease and then I gradually like so it fades like a gradient, like a nice gradient. And so all these sort of creases just have this like gradient to them. And 
no, I mean, you don't need, you really don't need to like worry about it too, 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 too much. Um, just follow that same principle. And it takes a lot of practice. Listen, like I said at the top of this, I've been coloring with colored pencils for 10 years, which is crazy to say because I'm literally only 21. Um, so just think about that for a moment. Nobody is born good at anything. It always takes practice. So if you're coloring right now and you're like, damn, it's not coming out as smooth as says, that's okay. That is okay. It's still a good piece of art anyway. And practice makes perfect, but perfect doesn't exist. Art is about practice. I think anything, being good at anything is about practice. So now I'm sure you can see the difference between this hand and this one, how much more dimensional this looks, three-dimensional this looks. Because a big part of like the challenge of drawing and coloring is creating an illusion. We're coloring on a two-dimensional surface, but we want to make it look like it is three-dimensional, like it is actually there. All right, so I'm bored of that. Let's go to the next hand right here. I think this is pretty good so far, except for the fact that it's looking a little yellow, but that's where these guys come in. So yeah, I'm just gonna do the same thing again. Very finely, like follow the lines, you know. Hands are notoriously difficult to draw. Um, I know that all too well as an artist. Um, it took me many, many years and I still sometimes struggle. I think I more so struggle drawing hands in a stylized way than I do in a realistic way. Like I was able to draw this in a few hours, but if you asked me to draw like hands from Gravity Falls or something, I, <laughs> yeah, just the fact that they have four fingers instead of five like really throws me off, so. Um, yeah, hands are notoriously difficult to draw, but I would say like practicing, I used to practice like tracing my hand and using my left hand to draw my right hand without picking up the pencil from the paper, which is really difficult and like embarrassing because it looks ugly afterwards, but it's worth it because now I can draw hands. I always, I'm, I'm the, there are artists out there who can draw without looking at references, but I am not one of those I love looking at references to draw things. Um, it just, I'm, I'm a very visual person. So to have a visual aid to me is really valuable. All right, we got our hands. They're very yellow. Very, very yellow. They're so yellow, oh my God. It's okay. They're not actually that yellow in real life, but they're showing up that way on camera. So we're gonna take this, this maroon. And we're going to do something very, very important. We basically have our mid-tones um, set up, which is like the middle. They're not super light and they're not super dark. And now we're going to go in with the dark tones. Um, and so that's what this is. I'm going to zoom in a little bit like that, right? Um, so I'm going to go like very lightly, very lightly, because this is a fair skin tone. We're going to do this very lightly. I'm going to very lightly go underneath these creases over here. And I'm not even really going to blend it out. I don't need to do that with this because there's this is this is like the darkest point on the hand. So it doesn't fade out. Da, 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 da. I'm gonna get in between the fingies here, and you know, Nothing crazy, each like knuckle fold, right? We got our knuckle folds. Um, and I'm also going to do some light shadow work. So I want it to be like the pinky is sort of on top of the index finger there, right? No, ring finger. Or something. So I'm going to, yeah. And this is like very gentle, very subtle. You can see I am holding the pencil further away from the tip. So I sort of have less control over where my pencil is going and that's fine. 
it's good. I'm doing that on purpose because it sort of matters less. And the further away you hold your pencil from the tip, the lighter it will go to. It's harder to put pressure on a pencil when you're holding it so far away. Um, so if you're having trouble with like applying too much pressure, I recommend doing that. So I'm going to go into the, the fingernail right there and I'm going to do that again here. Um, yeah. This is very, 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 very simple. Just, I mean, like, you know. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, I think we can move on to the final color, All right? Which is pink. Do you guys like pink? I think pink is cute. So what happens when you have a fair, a fair skin tone, you don't even need to be that fair. I'm not fair skinned really. Um, and my palm is still pretty red. That's because I have blood throwing, flowing through my body. <laughs> so it will look pink. My nails look pink because my nails are applying pressure to my finger always. So it's like always going to show, you know, the blood. Yeah, I'm just a fully alive human with blood in my body. And that shows in my hands. And this especially shows in people with fair skin. So that's what this pink is doing. We're basically blushing the hands. So in these big palm sections and like in every section, marked outside of the creases and things is where we're going to blush basically so i'm just going to go side by side and like do that very very lightly all right we're going to zoom in so you guys can see that look at that now depending on like who you're coloring they might have like really red hands um and you can totally like press darker on the hand. Um, and if anyone wants, I can demonstrate that as well. But you just wanna really lightly um, go side to side, uh, sort of cross hatch, like color in one direction and then color in the opposite direction and like a little patch on each of the fingers, especially like the fingertips, I find to have like a lot of um, blood rush to them because you're constantly touching things and stuff. And like you have feeling like there, there's like so many nerve endings there. And I'm gonna even do some blush like right there. And yeah, and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the same thing for this hand. Um, just very, and again, I'm like holding the pencil far away from the tip. So my application onto the paper is really light, uh, but I still have control over where it's going. Do, 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 do. Oh yeah, and we're gonna color in the fingernails pink. Cause you know, people have pink fingernails. Uh, some people do, some people don't, I do. So that's, that's pretty cool. Um, you can even, you know, if the person you're coloring has nail polish on, you color in the nail polish, of course. And yeah, I'm just gonna like... So this is sort of the unorthodox thing. Um, I've kind of gone a bit heavy handed because I've been using the, uh, the camera feedback instead of like my actual eyes. Um, and I have decided I'm going back over top everything with this peach color, the original peach color that we used. I've decided that I've been a little too heavy handed with the yellow. Um, this is 
they're not the same. So this is where that handy dandy erasing comes into play. And in particular, I'm just going to do it really like around the creases. I think they're creasing like a bit too dark. Um, and I'm going over everything with the peach again, just to like marry everything together, mush everything together. So now it's like, they're all combined into one sauce of color. And I'm going to pull out my eraser from my pencil bag that it has lipsticks on it because I love makeup. This is a neater, this is a kneaded eraser. Um kind of fancy, <laughs> I guess. Um, but you can use a regular eraser. I just don't have one on me. So um yeah, I'm gonna use my bitten kneaded eraser. Kneaded erasers are cool because you can really get particular with like where you're erasing. Whereas like larger erasers sort of erase more broadly, but um, I'm using this to erase broadly because this is a fair skin tone. So it's mostly white. Like it's literally the, the you know, <laughs> calling white people doesn't come from nowhere. <laughs> like they just have a lot of white in their pigment or lack of pigment, I guess. That's how you put it. White is a lack of color, um, artistically speaking. And artistically and scientifically speaking. And uh, actually, no, it's reverse. So with pigment, white is a lack of color and black is the presence of all colors. But in light, black is the, is the uh, absence of light and white is the presence of all light. So we have, anyway, enough of that. We have our bare skin tone done. Oh my God, he's done. And right next to it, we're gonna go on and do the dark one. I'm gonna do one hand instead of two because this is going to be a bit more involved. So I'm using this gold. I'm using this brown. I am using another brown, like a dark brown. I know it looks black, it's brown, I promise. I will be, I will also be using like regular smegular black if I can find it. It's here. Boom. Right. See, this is brown and this is black. It's very subtle, but it'll it'll be obvious when I once I put it on the paper. Um And I think I will use the peach again. So we're using, instead of four color pencils, we're using five. Um, and I'm going to start with the gold. Now I'm going to go, I'm going to do the same thing and like color in the base, except I'm going to apply a little bit more pressure so that I get more of the color pencil on the paper. My lips are dry from talking this much. Oh my goodness. I need to bring my chapstick to school. Um, yeah, super quickly, you know, the bigger the, the paper, the bigger the image you're coloring in, the longer it's gonna take. Um, I printed this out on standard eight and a half by 11 paper. And uh, this hand is probably like two and a half inches long. <laughs> so yeah. All right, boom. Colored it in. Amazing. Here's the thing about dark skin. I will use myself as an example. Our skin tone is different from our palm color. While People with fair skin often have the same color all throughout or like the same um, pigment all throughout. That's the word, pigment or lack thereof, I guess. People with darker skins and it becomes more pronounced the darker your skin is. We don't have the same amount of pigment on our palms. You can see my palm is lighter and redder than the back of my hand. My hand's like brown. 
and my palm is like lighter and it has all this red stuff. Um, and this is pretty much true of most, if not all dark skinned people. And I really wanted to stress this because I often see artists color darker skinned people with dark palms. And, you know, if that's a stylistic choice, my only thing would be to say, to keep it consistent with all your characters. Um, but most of the time, I just view it as a mistake. <laughs> um, darker skinned people have light palms because um, our palms usually face down. They don't need melanin to protect them from the sun. We're not always walking around with our hands open to the sky. So we did not evolve to have melanin on our palms. And the bottoms are the bottoms of our feet, same thing. The bottoms of our feet are also um, lacking in that melanin and pigment. Which is why I started with this gold. This is going to be pretty much our lightest color here. And so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take this brown, this like medium brown, and we're only going to color the wrist and one side of the thumb and like the pinky a little bit. So we're going to color this part of the thumb where it meets the nail. Right here. And the wrist. And the rest of the palm is just going to be that yellow. Um, and this is going to take longer because there's more pigment. So you want to, again, I work in layers. If you want to just go crazy and like press super hard, um, my colored pencils are not really quality enough for that. I don't think, I think these work better. These ones in particular work better in layers anyway. Um, but if you have something like Prismacolor, like you can just go straight away. Um, Prismacolors almost have too much pigment for me. I'm like, whoa, let me get there. <laughs> um, the thing though, if you notice, is that it's not a straight line dividing my skin tone and my palm color, um, which is also what we want to pay attention to when we're coloring this in. So when we get to the ridges or like the edges of like where the melanin sort of stops, I guess, for lack of a better phrasing, we want to very lightly go into the circular motion. I'm drawing little baby circles very lightly. Um, and this will create an irregular pattern with the color pencil. And um, our brain is our brains are just wired to to like not recognize irregular visuals more than straight ones, more than like precise ones. Um, uh, yeah, and we're just going to keep darkening that. So I'm taking the dark brown. This is not black. This is dark brown, as you can see. And I'm going on the edge here, on the edges of the wrist, you know, nothing crazy. And I'm going really dark and I'm pushing and you see my fingers really close to the tip of the pencil, which means I'm applying pressure, okay? Pressure, we're doing pressure. It's a good song by Ari Lennox, um, but anyway. And then as we move away from the edges of the wrist, um, you know, we get a little lighter. And like less um, less pressure on the pencil. More pressure here, less pressure here. More, less, more, less in the middle. Um, and same thing. So interestingly, I'm going to point this out also. 
you can see the skin over my knuckles is darker than the skin between them. And that's because there are so many god dang folds. Yes, I can bend this knuckle. I played piano for 10 years. <laughs> so the knuckles have darker skin than the rest of the finger. Um, so that's going to be like right here on the fingernail. And uh, right here on like where the thumb bends. And again, in that circular, tiny circular motion is really good because it like blends it into the existing color underneath without that much effort. And I'm gonna do that circular motion again um, down here. Boom, boom, boom. Um, and, and I'm gonna go over again with this. So another thing I wanna do is um, add dimension to this palm, girl. This palm is looking crazy. It's looking really flat. Um, so we're gonna do what we did, you know, with the, the fair skin tone. And um, yeah, just like match all that, you know? like very quickly and like blend it out. So it appears more natural and not abrupt. Like, oh yeah, you know? Um, and I'm going to like very lightly color over all of this with the brown with the light brown. Like so. So we're just working to like blend all the colors together. And I'm going to take the dark brown and I'm going to go really, really precise on the um, on this crease and like right here, like where I want the most dramatic shadows to be. Word, check that out. Yep, so like all the really dark spots where a light wouldn't shine as much, we're going to apply. And then like you can get even more dimensional and use some black, like just straight up black. Just be careful because black can very quickly overwhelm your piece. So you don't want that to happen. I'm gonna go back in with this orange. I mean, this gold, this is gold. We actually, I didn't even use this, the, the peach that we used. Um, and I'm gonna apply some pressure. You can probably hear my pencil hitting the paper right now, how hard it is. And um, I'm gonna use this to like blend all the darker colors that we just laid down. So that it looks more natural. And you can feel free to add like blush again. Um, some dark skin people have a lot of blood rush to their hands, some people don't. But this is basically how to color a dark skin person's hand with uh, yellow undertones in their skin. So I pretty much use this golden and like these dark oranges and stuff. 
And so next, I'm going to teach you, I'm going to show you, I guess this will be our last one, um, another dark skin hand, but this time with cooler undertones. These are like warm yellows, goldens. I'm going to be using blue. Wow. So we're still going to use these three, the black, dark brown, and light brown. But I'm going to also use this pink and this peach. So beginning with this peach, same step. Or let's do this hand right here. And the reason why we're using peach instead of gold is because on the color wheel, if you know, um, red is a closer color to blue than gold. So this is, peach is sort of just like pink with uh, yellow added to it. That's how I would describe it, I guess. All right, so we got that filled in and we're going to do, again, we're going to color in the wrist or the arm rather. Doing that really, really light. And like haphazardly um, because I wanna get in with this dark brown. Like immediately, immediately I'm getting in with this dark brown. Get all that other stuff out the way. We're going in with this dark brown. We're going to get right up to the palm here. All right. And like the thumb a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Right, and we got our, like, you know, we can do the creases, the crease shadows and stuff. Let's get that out of the way for a moment. Boom. And just like lightly color around those. So we know we have like, yeah. All right, so we got our dark brown. And this is where it gets kind of crazy, right? We have this blue. And I'm going to pull out, what is this? Um, another blue, a dark blue, but I, I want uh, a purple. This is a violet. We're going to use these three, violet, dark blue, regular blue. So now, I don't know if you noticed, but once I put the blue on top of the brown, because brown and blue are complementary colors, it looks really gray. You can still see that it's blue, but like it's super, like this is blue and this is like gray. So it's not quite black. And I think using complementary colors to create your shade and shadow instead of using black makes for a more colorful um, color composition. Because it's very easy to just go in with the black, but let's have some fun. Am I right? And the reason why I'm using purple is because if you know how to make colors, you know that purple is red and blue. And red means that there is blood, right, in our bodies. But because it is so dark, it would look kind of purpley. So I'm going along the edges here, really close to the tip. And I am coloring, color, color, color along the edges of the arm. Yep. 
the reason why I chose to, to color in hands in particular is because these techniques are pretty much applicable to the entire human body. Um, hands are just immediately visually recognizable instead of like a knee or something. Um, if you know where light hits different body parts or like even better for using reference, you can see where your light is hitting um, your model or like yourself even. You can just use this technique to get your shadows in. So in the middle, I'm very lightly coloring. And on the ends, I am putting a lot of pressure. Nothing really different. I'm going to go back in with my dark brown, though. So on top of all this purple and blue, we're adding the dark brown again. Boom. Look at that. Look at that. Amazing. So I'm gonna go back in with this peach and just press really hard, but in the center. So opposite of what we're doing with the blue and the purple, because this is really our highlight color. We want it in the center of the piece. And uh, again, all over the palm, blah, 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 all right? So Gonna like do that. The tricky thing about this is that like I I get sucked into color pencil coloring with color pencil. So I would like sit here for hours tweaking every little um nook, I guess. Um but that's not necessary. I'm using this dark brown for shadow and to blend in right here. Also right there. Just anywhere where I see something not blended into my preference, I will go in and adjust that. Again, with these like tiny baby circular motions that are super light. Super, super light. And I'm going to do the same thing with the peach color. I mean, that it's like a stain. Mm. But right. I'm putting more pressure because this is a lighter color and I really want it to show up. Um, but if you're using more expensive, luxurious color pencils, you probably wouldn't need to do that. It's less of a, it's less of a physical task. Um, but I kind of like the way this feels, like in a tactile sense, so I'm not too upset about it. So it sort of looks like the previous hand we did, except we're missing one vital color. It's pink. And this is where it really ties all together. When we get this pink up in here, it gets fun. So again, this is a highlight color, so I'm going in and I'm highlighting. And it's also a blush color. So I'm going in and I'm blushing. But this time I'm sort of doing the whole palm instead of just bits and pieces.
And so this is really the fun part about coloring different skin tones is like the thousands and thousands of different variations of color combinations you can use to color different people. And like some parts have more, like right there. Right there. And we can go back in and do some more peach. Um, but generally speaking, like, yeah. So even though these are both, these two are both dark skin tones, you can see that because I used blue and violet instead of just like black and dark brown, um, this one ends up being a lot more deeper than this one. But they're both very valid and realistic skin tones that they're that people out there in the world have. Um, and yeah, that's basically, I covered all of the basics of it. And the task of like coloring in all the hands is just a matter of like your own creativity in terms of combining different colors. So obviously I'm sure you can tell I used more yellow tones for these pair of hands. This one is more orangey um, with like really light palms. Um, I can probably could use some pink in there, honestly, on the palms, if I'm being honest, um, and like the finger pads and stuff. But yeah, uh, I think that's certainly all the basics for me in terms of how to color in different skin tones, how to color in dark skin tones with light palms because dark skin people have light palms. Um, any questions? I think everybody's good. Really? Yeah, a couple of people had to run out and a lot of people took, um, we, a lot of people took your supplies and stuff. So yeah, I think we're all good. We're all good. Everyone liked you in the hands. Um, so that's great. They did very well. Uh, they had a hard time finishing. There's a few after school, there was a few um, late night activities. So the, uh, a few people left, but a lot of hands were done and your circle of hands, you know, this one and the other one with the overlay those mm -hmm. were done too so Great. does anybody have any other questions this is what i did today and this is my sample so you can see i pretty wow. much i pretty much replicated what i did um right. what i did do mm -hmm.